iRacing Auto Stages brings modern NASCAR stage racing to iRacing. In hosted or AI sessions, you'll have automated stage breaks, stage scoring, custom stage options, advanced stats, plus the ability to run a full season with the modern NASCAR points formats. Cup, Xfinity, or Trucks playoffs, you'll have eliminations, clinches, tracked stats, all the way down to the championship four. Now we'll look at the season modes in part two of this tutorial. Part one, we'll look at the program itself, how the file structure is, and how to have the best experience possible. So you can extract the iRacing Auto Stages folder anywhere to your computer, it'll run just fine. Inside, there will be four folders. Three will hold the season mode, configuration files, and standings. This single race results folder is where Auto Stages will generate the race results HTML file after any race that is not a part of a season. Very important, if your iRacing sim is set to run as administrator or any other elevated permission, be sure that iRacing Auto Stages is also set to run as administrator also, or else the program will not link properly and run your stage race. As you can see in the background, we're lined up here at Bristol. Now you also have to open iRacing Auto Stages before the pace lap has begun. So before that parade lap begins, you can open iRacing Auto Stages and you'll see the stage information, race information filled in here in the race info panel. This Auto Stages active message will pop up. And look at the bottom right here, the Auto Stages active message will appear and be sent if you see that, you'll know that the program is linked properly and see those uh, stage laps filled in. By default, iRacing Auto Stages will be set to Auto here in the bottom left. What that means is it's detecting which track you're on and it will configure your stage laps as the stage laps were set up at last year's cup race at that track. If you're at Charlotte and at the oval format, it'll be a four stage race by default. It's the Roval format. You'll have three stages as the Roval stages were set up. By clicking custom, you'll see the stage options. Stage one end, by clicking that, you'll have a two stage race. If you click on stage two end, this will be a three stage race and so on. These percentages will tell you which lap that stage will end on, right? So if I click on stage one end, it's at the 50% and then click on the set stages button, You'll see things change and the stage one end will be 15 because, well, 15 is 50% of 30. So do a little mental math if you uh, want to set up your stages manually. Now, the little column here underneath the yellow flag has these checkboxes. If you deselect these checkboxes, there will not be a stage break caution after the end of that stage. So it's possible to set up a three stage race with a caution after the end of the first stage and no caution at the end of the second stage. Um, you can do that just fine, but be sure after you set any custom stage options, you click on the set stages button so that things are locked in to the program. If not, again, things jumbled and not set up as you'd like them to be. Looking over at the right, if you click on Cup Season or Xfinity Season or CTS Season, that will let the program know that this is a season race and stats will be tracked accordingly. You can only do one at a time. Obviously, I'll cover that a little bit later. If you click on Stage Warnings, what that is is the program will send a chat message to let you know that the end of the stage is approaching, which we'll cover as well. Um, that's really good if you're running a multiplayer race or a hosted session and you need to send that information to everyone else because the only person that needs to run auto stages in a hosted session is the admin of the race. Compact view will give you a little draggable window here, which allows you to let's pull up a cockpit view for someone here. Drag this as an overlay like this and put that anywhere in front of your window. So as you're racing, you can kind of see the relevant stage information here. Um, very basic, but very good if you're running a stage race and uh, maybe you don't have the stage warning set up or whatever. Like that's just an overlay there. Let's pull up auto stages again. We're about to roll out here on the grid and I will show you the format of the race and the race flow and what to expect as the race gets going. So as our leader, William Byron, is coming to the three laps to go in the stage point here, 
You'll see a chat notification in the bottom right to inform drivers that there are three laps remaining in the stage. And then with two laps remaining in the stage, as soon as the leader crosses the line, the pits will be closed. And then you'll get one more stage warning for the rest of the field here. The one lap remaining in stage one chat message will be sent here. And then as we come around to the final bit of the stage here, once the 10th place driver, let's see who that is here. Or probably in this here. Cindric looks like he's in 10th. Once the 10th place driver crosses the line at the end of the stage, our stage caution will come out and the stage will come to a close. See the notification in the bottom right, automatic caution flag, and a message that William Byron has won stage one. And if a caution comes out naturally after the pits have been closed, but before the stage has ended, the stage will end early and the current positions will be scored as the end of the stage positions. If there is no stage break caution, pits won't close. That's the only difference there. If you have less than 10 drivers in your session, the caution flag will not come out after the 10th place driver crosses the line. But if you have less than 10, the caution for a stage break caution will come out as the leader finishes the final lap of the stage. If for whatever reason, this caution has not come out after the end of a stage, the program is set to automatically throw that caution flag after the leader completes one lap after the end of that stage. So just as a fail safe there, that's built in the program too. All right, jumping ahead to the end of the race here. See if Christopher Bell can get it done. It's like, no. You will know that it is safe to close auto stages and close the iRacing Sim after the elapsed time at the upper left has switched to 168 hours. That's how you know we're in the cooldown session of the session here. Let's see. Finish. Anytime now. There it is. Once we're in uh, this session here, the cool down period, that's how you know that auto stages is all complete for this race. So that's when the race results file will be generated running a season mode that's when the season standings will be updated as well and we'll go back to the iRacing auto stages folder that single race results and there is our Bristol Motor Speedway results HTML file and as you look here we're not going to go through the whole thing but you'll see the advanced stats over here on the right side average running position green flag passes quality passes um, you'll see the fastest lap the full stats here for the entire race highlighted purple here because Christopher Bell was our fastest lap time of the race. So it gets a bonus point. Um, plus or minus, that's just the positions gained or lost from their starting position. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the stage results and a little glossary. Really basic. I don't plan on fleshing this out too much, making it too fancy for you guys. As I know, we're just uh, here to run some good races. So this won't be too pretty as time goes on. But you'll have some Really good information and some more detailed stuff that you won't get anywhere else but iRacing Auto Stages. So that's it for part one of the tutorial. If you have any questions or need any help setting anything up, have a suggestion for the app, feel free to message me, whether it's through the iRacing forums or Reddit or YouTube or email. Feel free to stay in contact. We'll look at the season mode in part two how seasons are set up, file structure, all that kind of good stuff. So that's coming up in a separate video. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.